Hello fish reefers and welcome to the Pacific Fish Reef funded by a generous donation from the Stevenson Pope Babcock Foundation a little over a year ago this is the beginning of an entire network of CK biogenic reefs in the Pacific we named it the Pope Reef after a young man who sadly lost his life in the 90s in Baja California but this stands as his legacy for the next 500 years the CKs will give life almost perpetually for that entire period of time. As you can see when we place them on the sea floor it's mostly empty mud and that's because most of the ocean is empty mud and sand. About 99 percent of it is and if you were to chart the entire ocean reefs would barely show up. Reefs are rare but it's where all the biodiversity, all the life is. But when you put a sea cave on the seabed Ten months later, this is what you get. Full of macrocystis, giant kelp, the fastest growing plant in the world. Sand bass, calico bass, lobster, sheephead, whitefish, worms populating the sand. The macrocystis is a wonderful blue carbon sink. And then, of course, the lobster have found the sea cave because they can smell the mussels and the clams and everything growing on it. They're a very commercially important species and you can actually enhance the lobster population by giving them more places to both spawn and go through the molting stage safely. And then of course the sand bass are in there spawning and feeding and you can tell the large ones have a distended belly. That means they're actually pregnant and they most likely spawn directly on this reef. The sand bass are a very curious animal. They're an important sport species and in some places a commercial species. Now the bait, the Spanish mackerel, Scomber japonicus, have found the sea cave reef. This is very important because early on the bait was not there. So it's clearly reached a critical mass and that allows the entire food chain to really kick off once the small fish show up. Early in their day, we saw a blue whale swim through here. Sadly, I didn't have the camera on. There is a decorator crab and a kelp crab. They're either mating or fighting. I can't quite tell the difference. There's more sand bass. And the sea cave is designed with large apertures, large holes doors, four of them, and a large arched doorway in the middle. And it's designed to be universal, to where crabs like the hiding spaces, lobsters like the hiding spaces. The large flat area on the surface is perfect for large kelp holdfasts to grow. There's a nice lobster walking in the open, and a blacksmith swimming off, which is indicative of really good current. It's an indicator species and there's a lobster crawling up the arch doorway. And you can see the blue mussels have taken hold and they're growing both on the outside and the inside because of the high water velocity that moves through the sea caves. And we even spotted a few juvenile rock scallops starting to take hold. Here's a nice egg mass, most likely from a top shell snail. Having biogenic reefs that mimic the form and function of nature allow an entire cast of marine characters to live and thrive that otherwise wouldn't. What you see in front of you is a female senorita fish. And they typically live around kale forests and they eat algae and things like that. Another lobster seeking refuge. And here's a decorator crab. Watch when he quits moving, he's practically invisible. The miracle of nature always impresses me. There's about nine very nice sized lobster in that one. About half of the sea caves had lobster in them, also known as crayfish, down there in Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea. See, the sand bass are all over the general area. They go in and out of it, they go above it. 
at night the lobsters are probably out crawling on top of the sea caves. This is a complete smorgasbord of shellfish. There's three nice lobster, a yellow rock crab, and if you look closely off to the right, a spider crab. All using the same little nook that was intentionally designed specifically for this purpose. Oh, and a sand bass has shown up. Even if the sea cave sinks halfway into the sand, it will still have plenty of room for the creatures to live. That was a purple sea urchin, which is also an important member of the reef community to graze and for the other animals to consume. Now here's a lobster crawling up the wall. And he just keeps going. It's a male. You can tell by the small little flipperettes under the tail. And right out the five inch hole. Which was designed to add maximum water flow. The lobsters feel very safe in the sea caves because they know they have an exit. And here's a nice spider crab or a centollo, as the Spanish would say, just going for a walk. And here's some sea caves in shallower on a clearer day with brown marine algae, both giant kelp and laminaria, just flowing in the surge. And here we are in South Carolina. I've shown this to you to show that the effect of the sea cave is very similar in just about any ocean that you place them. These are full of spade fish and juvenile snapper. These were underwater only three months, placed by the Department of Natural Resources as part of their state reefing program. And as you can see over the diver's right shoulder are the greater amberjacks that have come in to feed on the abundant bait fish you see behind the diver. And as you can see in the tropics with the soft coral, the sea cave does well. And all around the world, in Mexico, in Africa, in Papua New Guinea, and right here in the United States. Fish Reef Project is here to serve the ocean and here to serve the public. And thank you for helping ocean life thrive.